got a lot of people here, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first, uh, well, let me just put up the, uh, the title slide so we know what we're talking about today. I share my screen. I'm sure you all know what we're talking about, but we're going to do a webinar on easy content creation with InDesign and In5, and then we're going to look at hosting and password protection with TinyHost. And today we have with us Elston. I'm going to stop sharing for a moment here. Uh, Elston Barreto from TinyHost. And yeah. he's going to uh, walk us through his product. And we also have Myra Ferguson. Hello. And April Clark. And they are both from Ajar Productions, and they will be helping to answer your questions in the chat and at the end, which we will have plenty of time for. So let me just jump right back into the agenda. We are going to first look at some customer examples. So for any of you who are not familiar with N5, uh, you're going to see what what can be made within five, some of the um, different kinds of examples. And then we'll look at actually what it takes to create interactivity with InDesign and export within five very briefly. And um, uh, we can point you to longer, more in-depth examples if you want. We just wanna give you a tease today and then show you what it's like to upload those files with TinyHost. And we're going to look at uh, password protection among some of the other easy features uh, with TinyHost. But if, if you're familiar with uh, traditional hosting, you're going to see just how much easier it is to do with TinyHost, especially if you're a designer, you're somebody who doesn't uh, get deeply into technical stuff. I think you're going to be interested to see just how easy this is. And then we're going to leave lots of time for your questions. Um, so I'm sure things are going to come up. Uh, if you have anything along the way, feel free to put it into the chat. Uh, Myra and April will be watching that. And um, we, they, they can interject if, um, if they think uh, it's a good question to answer on the spot. Otherwise, we'll, we'll save them to the Q&A at the end. And um, we, should, we should get to Q&A at about half past the hour. Um, and we'll leave plenty of time for that. And, uh, and both... Um, all of us are, are fine to be here as long as you have questions, uh, so don't hesitate to ask. Let's we'll start off and look at some of the uh, examples of things you can create within Five. Uh, you may have noticed because I was switching apps that um, I was in the browser when I loaded up this presentation. This presentation is actually created within Five. And so it's, uh, it's just running in the browser and it kind of looks like uh, PowerPoint or Keynote, but in fact, it was created in InDesign. I'm going to see if I can find a way to hide this. Hide video panel, hide names, hide floating meeting controls. There we go. Um, the, one of the hardest things presenting with Zoom is it puts these meeting controls up above and it's right over the tabs in the browser. And so, uh, sorry for that pause. Mm -hmm got them out of the way. Um, yeah, there's, a, there's an option in the menu there. So um, this is uh, one of my favorite animation examples. And uh, what I love about this one is that it, the animation is kind of specific to the objects on the page and where they're located. So you'll have things come in based on where they are and they come in at angles based on where they are and they kind of create the page. So that's one of my favorites is that those things pull apart. And uh, this is the same designer, uh, the same, same group. Uh, this was two years later and they did this as a flip book. And the example we'll, we'll look at today is actually a flip book. All of these things are created within five without doing any kind of coding. They're just different options that you select uh, when you export in terms of how this is going to look. So this one looks like a flipbook and it's got, you know, cool animation, just like the other one. 
Whereas this project also has cool animation, but is a completely different look and feel. Now, this is an interactive guide and it's made much more like a, an interactive app. And so it's got this pop-up. This is created with a multi-state object in InDesign. And uh, this pop-up has multiple states, but it also has a hidden state. So when I hit skip, it uh, hides it entirely. And then I can follow these tracks and click through and uh, it guides me through this process. It's also got uh, a main menu up here that I can access. So uh, you can see this is a completely different looking project. And again, here's another different project. This is a, a college alumni magazine. It has a web-like feel, it has live text. Uh, it uses Google fonts. So it's um, completely selectable text. There's a little more work on the designer's part to set this up. Uh, because there's a little bit of translation going from InDesign to the web, but uh, same deal, all built in, in InDesign and made to look like uh, this specific type of content. You can see great variation between those. Here's another different example. Uh, this is a, a portfolio piece that Ren Reed did, and it has kind of a digital magazine feel. It's got a lot of interactivity in it. And it's got things like these thumbnail pages, so you can jump to them and, uh, and then interactivity within each of the pages. So here's the slideshow, for example, you can click through. And another, again, completely different example, um, kind of a web page look. You can see as I scroll down a couple of things, this picture is staying in place, so we have uh, this, this parallax effect, and this menu is also staying in place. So this is all created with uh, InDesign and N5. There's a background video here. And scroll to the top button, there's a, there was a slideshow there too. And this is responsive. And so uh, we've got a different menu in this version and uh, a, different, a different look to it. So this is what you'd see on a phone or maybe a very small tablet. And just one other example, um, I won't be showing the InDesign file with this unless um, you have specific questions in the q and I've got the document open in InDesign, we can look at it, um, but it shows off a lot of the uh, other types of interactivity. So there's a scrolling frame, here we've got a menu. This is actually built by the menu builder. So it, it builds the interactive pieces for you in InDesign. Um, let's see, we've got object states, uh, 3D flip cards is something we won't talk about. So I'll just uh, give you an indication of how they work. And then um, this is the, um, the alternate layout. Uh, so this is the, the mobile, uh, the tablet vertical layout. This one is responsive as well. And there seems to be a little quirk with the 3D not quite working properly. Um, so I'll need to look at, look at that. They're flipping over, but normally they flip over in 3D space. And that might just be a browser change. Uh, so that's one of the things uh, we encounter and we try and take care of that for you. When there is a, a change in the browser, uh, we go in and make sure that we update the export code so uh, that it keeps working on all the major browsers for you. Uh, so I just want to see oh, one more thing in here I want to show you in this document is this image sequence and it's draggable. Um, so this creates a kind of nice interactive animation as I drag. And the document we're going to be looking at today comes from a, a course in our video training library. Um, and I'll mention that again later. This is a flipbook because uh, sometimes people uh, create flipbooks, they create interactive magazines and uh, they want to share them to a select audience. Uh, maybe you want to preview it to a client. Uh, maybe you have some sort of a manual subscription process um, that you, you know, want to only give access to certain people. And so, uh, you know, this is the, uh, this is the example we've chosen for today. It's got a table of contents. Um, you can see some animation on some of the pages. 
We've got a video playing here. It plays automatically. There's also a, um, an example of the mobile article explorer. Uh, so this is a tool for this example. This one, we didn't design a responsive layout. And uh, so on for the mobile versions, here's an easy uh, readable bit of the text. And uh, I'll show you a little bit about setting that up. Uh, now the flipbook export is slightly responsive. So when I shrink this down, you'll see that it changes to a single page view. And when I go back up, it's back to the two page view. So yeah, just added a little bit of animation to make this a little more dynamic and engaging than it would otherwise be. And uh, these animations can be set up in sequences in InDesign. And we'll take a look at that. And I'm just gonna hurry along here. There's more animation and there's the last page. So those are our examples. And the couple of things I mentioned uh, in those examples, this website is from a, a course that Keith Gilbert did that's in our Ajar Academy library. I recommend taking a look at that if you wanna see how to make this into a website. That's obviously uh, something that you might be interested in hosting on TinyHost. And uh, our example file today comes from uh, transitioning from print to digital, that course. Uh, so if you, if you find this document interesting and you want to play around with it more, uh, the premium version of the course gives you access to all the exercise files. And of course, you can see what Keith does to make this document even more digital in that course. So let's uh, take a look at what it's like to create the interactivity now. And let me go ahead and hide my floating meeting controls again. And now I'm in InDesign. Um, this is the, the document before I start adding any of the interactivity. So let me just quickly show you some of those things before I hand it over to Elston to show you TinyHost. Justin? There yes. was a question from Colin that says, how well does this layout work on, say, an iPhone? And I, I, I didn't catch which layout he was referring to, though. Oh, yeah. So if you're creating responsive layouts, um, like these two examples, you can make an iPhone-specific layout um, that works particularly well on there. Uh, for this one that is a flipbook, let me go into the inspector and turn on... Um, the mobile emulator and you can see what it looks like on an iphone now it's because i'm on this tiny screen resolution um i'm not sure i can show you everything because i don't know why this won't let me scroll down um but you can test different different iphone versions on there so that that gives you a sense of what this looks like um, there's the single page and obviously if had designing for the iPhone is a priority for you. Um, I'd recommend creating alternate layouts. Um, and uh, yeah, so we, we have other videos on that and I would just recommend checking out our YouTube channel. It's uh, youtube.com slash Ajar Productions. Um, and we can get it, you can see um, stuff on creating responsive layouts, which would actually you know, fill this nicely. But this with no extra work, um, this is just, I think this is a letter uh, page size. Um, and we've got automatic scaling here and it shrinks to a single page layout. You can see that looks um, better on some pages than other, like the others, this uh, spread uh, is kind of cut off in this particular way. Um, so yeah, hopefully that gives you a sense and we can we could definitely dig into that more in the Q&A if you have more questions about that. Uh, so uh, quickly, I wanna show you uh, what it takes to create interactivity in InDesign. Uh, these panels on the right here are all native parts of InDesign. When you install N5, uh, you'll get this N5 menu at the top with export options and interactive widgets. So the 3D flip card is here, for example, the mobile article explorer, the menu builder is in here. And there's a presentation mode, and that's what helps me create the, the slide presentation. So all those are found in the N5 menu, but there is all of this interactivity that is built in InDesign and you can find that under the window interactive section. So there's animation, buttons, object states, all that fun stuff. 
And uh, N5 builds on top of most of that. We try and take advantage of as much native uh, InDesign tooling as possible. So you're not, um, you know, learning, you know, random new stuff to use our product. So let's add an animation to this graphic. Let's have it fade in. And all I have to do to do that is go to the preset in the animations panel and go down and choose fade in. And that's it, there's an animation. We can preview it in the EPUB interactivity preview. Now this isn't the same as N5, uh, but there's a fair amount of overlap for testing uh, most animations and certain things like that. So we can see it's treating it as a spread here. So there's an extra page, but it is showing us the, the animation, um, which is working just as I would expect. And then same thing, but let's do, um, let's do multiple animations. So I can do that by clicking and then shift clicking to select multiple things. And let me apply a fade in again, and this will do it to the two different items. Now they're going to automatically animate in the order that I selected them. So if I double click, you can see the uh, selection around this item. That's the first one I had selected. And then here's the second one. If for some reason I wanted this, um, this one to play first, I could drag it up to the top or drag this other one below it. And uh, that would cause those to play like that. So if we preview that, let me hit play and it will refresh that. So that one plays, it plays first and then this one plays. And let's look at on this page, I wanna replace this with um, video. This is just a static image. So all I have to do to do that is to place. So I went to command D and let me go to my presentation here. I'm gonna go into my finished and go into my links. And there's my stretching video. So I'm using an MP4, it's H.264 encoded, which is just the standard you should be uh, seeing and using everywhere on the internet. It's what you would upload to YouTube or anywhere else, uh, but I'm placing it right in InDesign. And we can't see anything right right now. The way to fix that is to go to the media panel and add a poster frame. So right now it's set to none. And I'm just gonna say from current frame. And so it'll put that in there. And for some reason, the, the fitting is kind of weird. Uh, I, might, I might change that and say fill frame proportionally. It still looks kind of funny. Let's leave that for now for time's sake. And I just want to show you that there is a video widget from the N5 interactive widgets menu. And in there, not only does it have autoplay, but the ability to mute the video, which is the secret magic trick that will get this uh, to play in a browser without forcing the user to interact first. Because there are a couple of browsers that will block that. And then we can also loop. Uh, so that just gives you a sense. I could also set frame fitting here. So if the video doesn't fit the box that I put it in, um, I could stretch it proportionally to fill. I could have it cover. Uh, so those are some neat options that you have available there. And the controller set to none. So it's just going to play almost like a background video, but you do have the option to add a controller there. Uh, and also on this page is the um, mobile article explorer button that we see in the output uh, that works based on the article panel. And I don't have a lot of time to go in that, but basically the, the articles panel is uh, you just create an article and you start dragging stuff in here. So I can drag in text frames from multiple pages and uh, I have an article defined in here. And then with my button selected in N5, I'll go to the interactive widgets and the mobile article explorer. And all I have to do is select article one, uh, which is the name of my article here. And then when this is clicked or tapped, it will open that article in the, in the light box that comes up. So let me go to this page here. We can see it on mobile. There it is, it comes up on mobile. It's easy to read, easy to scroll, nice big text for your phone. All right, so again, I'm just teasing these. Um, this isn't a detailed how-to, but we have other videos on that um, that go more in depth.
Uh, so this is another example of a big image sequence that I did. Now, if I you know want to purposely do these in order, I'm just holding shift and clicking these in the order that I want them to animate. So picture first, and then text, and I'm doing it going around the pages. And then I would apply my animation, and that would apply to all of them. And if I needed to adjust any timing, I can do that in the timing panel. Now, I also have the option of what I did in the output here was I applied a fade in animation to this one. Uh, but for this, because this, this has a, uh, this text box has this blue line. Make sure you can see it. Uh, I kind of wanted this, I like the idea of this coming down. So again, thinking about the geometry of the page, uh, like the designer in these pieces, uh, and how can I make, how can I make the geometry part of the animation? I thought I'd like to have this coming down from the top. So for the preset, I select um, fly in from the top. And then I've got two animations here. And I would actually like, based on, I, I did some, some testing, which I'll, I'll save you the time. Um, and I didn't like them playing in sequence, so I wanted to play at the same time. So I'm gonna hold command on the Mac and be control on the PC. Uh, so that both of these are selected. And I'm gonna click this uh, little chain link button at the bottom here to play them together. And so then when I preview, and let me try and make the preview window bigger here this time, you should see that they get played together. So that fades in and this slides down as it fades in. So there's some basic animation controls. Um, we haven't even gotten into buttons or object states. Uh, but there's a whole nother world to enter. And if you have questions about those, uh, we can certainly go into them in the Q&A section. So I just want to keep moving along. And um, you know, normally what we do, let me back up just a second, um, because I did not mention how you export. So exporting is up here. Uh, what I recommend when you're starting out is to use the easy export wizard. I'm just going to go ahead and save this. And what that does is bring up a series of options of what kind of document are you making? And so in this case, it recognizes that I have two page spreads. It's like, hey, maybe you want a flipbook. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I will say I want pixel perfect text, which is gonna render the text's images to make sure they appear exactly as they do in InDesign. Now with these other projects like, uh, sorry, give me a moment. I'm gonna hide my controls again, uh, like the, Allegheny Magazine, this is live text and, uh, and Google fonts were added to this and that can be easily done. And this uh, scrolling website project, this is Adobe fonts, live text. Uh, so if I wanted to do that, I would do editable text and editable text. And then I would actually go into advanced and, uh, and connect it to Adobe fonts or Google fonts. Uh, but staying in the easy export wizard, I'm just gonna choose this simple option, uh, give it a name, and then hit export and it'll take you know basically a minute or two and then you will have your output now your output is going to come in this form and it's going to be uh, a lot of assets in a folder here and an index file and when i was showing you this earlier i was just looking at the index file on my local computer so let me get rid of all this and we can see what it looks like in the browser uh, without all the device testing and stuff. So this is viewing locally. And the question is, how do I get that to a server? And uh, if you're curious what it's like with traditional web hosting, I think this is um, necessary and helpful education to everybody who works in design or digital fields. Uh, so on Ajar Academy, this publishing to your own custom domain and website is a free course. I recommend you check it out just for general online literacy. Uh, but if you do, I think what you're going to find out is that um, what you see today as I hand over to Elston is that uh, TinyHost is so much easier to use than a traditional host. And, um, and I, I, think, I think you're gonna find that pretty interesting. And so to pass it off to Elston, uh, what, what I did with the files, was just to take these two and create a zip file. So I just compress them 
into a zip file, and then I've got that, and it's ready to upload to TinyHost. So with that, I'm going to pass it over to Elston. And uh, so let me stop sharing. And he's going to talk about what he did with that zip file once I made it and sent it to him. And Thanks. so go ahead, Thanks. Elston, and I will make you the presenter. Cool. Okay. Thanks, Justin. Um, just going to share my screen. Says, I think it says host disabled screen share. Okay. Okay. You should be the host wow. now okay. and you should be able to do it. Great. Um, so yeah, first of all, thanks for that little demo. I, I'm a web developer, so I know how difficult it is uh, to set up some of those animations. Um, so to be able to do that by just clicking a few buttons here and there is very cool. Um, and what I hope to show you today is a quick demo to just also simplify hosting, which is um, another kind of really tricky part. So um, this is TinyHost, and it's basically, in, in a nutshell, just the simplest way to host and share uh, your web project. And right when you enter a web page, this is where you can start interacting um, and uploading your file um, or anything you basically want to host over here. Uh, I'm going to jump through to the control panel, which is what you have once you've logged in uh, and signed up. So I've got a kind of a pro subscription here and literally I'll, I'll go through the main flow in a few seconds. So um, here we set a website name so we can just call it trial um, in five. We select uh, the zip file, which is the in five uh, digital magazine and we just press launch and in about three or four seconds um your web page is now live so this is the yoga web page which justin just designed um, and it works and is fully interactive um, as you'd expect um, to go through everything so this is now live at this url which you can take and share via email to anyone you want to prototype or share kind of a demo to um, and it, it works as, as any other website. So um, that's the kind of simplest flow. Um, alternatively, um, suppose you want to password protect this. Um, we can run through that again with a password protection. So we can call it trial in five again. Uh, we'll select a zip file. And this time we'll enable the password protection toggle. And let's just call, um, use that as the password. So uh, once you press launch again, it'll do exactly the same thing, but it'll set up with a password. So if I click this link again, you'll basically see a sign in uh, box here. So um, the username by default is access, and then we'll use the password that we just entered. And there we go. So it's now set up again against password protection. Um, and because of the way the authentication works in the same browser, if you go in it again, it may seem like it's not password protected, but it's actually saved because uh, you've already entered a password there for it. So um, yes, yeah, that's I I just want to, sorry to interrupt. I just want to mention, I think because you're just sharing uh, this browser window, we didn't see the password protect we didn't see ah. the access screen but something came up for you and you typed in the password just to make that explicit to everybody yes yes that's correct shall i do it again with a password pop up if you want uh, there's a there is a question while you're um pausing uh and the question is what is the duration of tiny host for how many days uh, my web page will my web page remain live on the web yes a good question um so on a trial um it's it's seven days so any website you upload will be live for seven days and the trial expires and, and web pages will be removed. But when you upgrade to a pro account, um, you can basically host it for as long as you want and as long as you need. And uh, the other thing, let me try and just reshare. I'll show one more quick demo. Um, and while you're getting that, there's another question. How is video hosted by TinyHost? So video, video hosting, if, if it is embedded already as part of your um, zip file and in, in, in your um, InDesign exported HTML, then it, it's basically exactly the same. So every, all your assets, such as images or even font files or videos just need to be in a zip file. 
um, and it'll automatically we'll all automatically unzip it and unpack it and it'll play as normal basically um cool so you can see my screen again is that correct yes cool so um another really cool feature is if you have your own kind of custom domain so as you've seen here these are hosted on um our one of our domains the tiny.site and that keeps it very simple just for you to get started straight away however you can connect your own domain so here i have a custom domain and it's called seriousdrone.com um, and it's already pre-connected so what this means is that when I um, basically uh, try to host it again, I can select one of the custom domains here. So I can basically select seriousdrone.com um, and I can put a custom um, subdomain on that. So now I can upload the zip file to this custom domain. So this is trial 5serialsdrone.com and if I launch that, you'll see it's now at a separate domain. And again, in a few clicks, this is now live. So we now, we now have it hosted on the tiny.site URL, plus we have it on my custom domain. Um, and that allows you to basically share links in a branded kind of way. So um, it's really good if you're an agency or freelancer, you wanna keep it quite professional. Um, and yeah, so you can set up multiple ways um, from that standpoint. Um, as also uh, as part of this kind of webinar, we are offering the trial for up to 50 megabytes. So typically it's around three megabytes. Um, and I'll just paste the link. Let me just share it properly again. So if you sign up via this link, which I'm about to paste in the chat, and we'll share the details as well later um, in an email, you will be able to sign up um, using this link into, uh, just a second, yeah. So if you, if you click on that link, you'll basically automatically be led to this page. And if you type your email in there, it's just a very simple sign up, and you'll automatically be able to upload um, files up to 50 megabytes because with, with uh, the content that you know is typically exported from in5 uh, they're a lot bigger than three megabytes and as a further kind of um, offer we are offering uh, 20 percent off um, any of the plans that you guys will uh, if you upgrade to our pro plans um, and that's with a special coupon code so that is in 520 off. I will also paste that in the Elston, chat. Yep. Uh, can I go ahead and copy that promo code link um, to everyone? Because right now it just was sent to the hosts only. Ah, uh, right. Yes, sure. Yep. Go ahead. Thanks. So let me go ahead and put that one in right now. And what would I call this? The, the, the free trial with... 50 with the 50 megabytes, megabytes uh, upload limit. Yeah. 50. Yeah, which is really cool. Cool. So while you're doing that, there are a few more questions that have come in. So yep. uh, is Tiny Host available with GitHub Student Pack? No, so we're, we're completely separate um, right now from, from GitHub or any other um, partnership. Um, so unfortunately not. Okay, and um, Aldo wanted to know, is it correct that he can hide his host name with web publishing um, with Tiny? Uh, and so, so he can create a domain for each client. That's correct, right? Yes. So if you're, if each client has their own custom domain, um, they can uh, use. You, you can you can sign up. You can con configure it so that you can host um, up to five domains, or or even more if you require more. Just message us, and we can configure your account for that. Um, and then you can host, um, yeah, content on each of your client domains. Um, and one other thing to note is that if you do connect uh, your domain via Tinyhost. It doesn't act to have to affect your main website. So, um, for example, you could be hosting your main website on you know, agileproductions.com, but then you can also connect uh, the same domain to Tinyhost so that anything on subdomains such as um, demo.agileproductions.com or demo2.agileproductions.com can also um, exist Cohen side by side. So it doesn't need to affect what whatever existing setup you have. Um, 
And we've got documentation to explain how that setup is. It's basically you add specific kind of records to your domain. Or if you if you are stuck, you know, feel free to message us. We're very happy to help out um, on support from, from that perspective. Cool. Um, so Elson, you were yeah. about to enter another code for everyone, I think. While Elson's getting that set up, I, I would I would also mention like some of the things even just on that that page, seeing that like the SSL is taken care of. So your website uh, with Tinyhost is secure by default. Um, there's so much um, that you would normally have to think about with a traditional host. Um, that you don't have to think about with tiny host. And um, I'm not even sure if you haven't done it in the past, if you can appreciate how much this is taking off your plate um, and you don't have to set up FTP to upload stuff. Like you're literally just dragging and dropping a zip file and it's making it into a website for you and taking care of all kinds of stuff behind the scene. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Thanks for that. Um, okay, I'm just gonna paste this code to everybody okay hopefully everybody got that message um so i'll quickly show you just how to redeem this code um again i'll, I'll we'll send some instructions um in the follow-up email so to do that um if you click on any of our plans um rather than going through the card format just click on paypal um you don't have to pay with paypal but we have a, a another kind of payment processor um type in your email and then just type in um, any postcode that you have linked to your account. And then you'll see a add coupon um, button here. And so if you add it as in 520 off, you'll see 20% is now uh, been deducted from the price. And you can pay by PayPal or by card here. Um, so yeah, that's that's demo from that perspective. So um, yeah, I think that's that's basically it from from the product perspective. Um, it's it's very simple and it's designed deliberately just to be within a few clicks as as um, as you want. And the other important thing is that um, we have kind of also ready made templates if you if you if that's something that is interesting you. But you don't also have to upload an entire zip file. So if you have somehow just one HTML file, um, you can also kind of set it up that way. So um, yeah, I hope that um, explains what, what we do. And I hope it, it can simplify hosting because uh, as a web developer, I, I know and, and Justin also knows how difficult hosting something um, can be. And I feel like it shouldn't be so difficult as there's so many um, options today. Um, and there's so much you can host. So. Uh, our mission has always been to try and make it as simple as possible to to achieve that. So it's been really great seeing you know, the types of things people have hosted, especially because a lot of uh, products are now you know digital and online. So um, yeah, that's that's it for me, and I'm happy to answer any more questions if we have any. So I have a question for you. Uh, it's actually based on one of the questions that Aldo has. Um, so he wanted to know if he could create a domain using a particular name and he's got, um, I think he's got some spaces in his, um, file name. Um, how does it handle it when you have special characters, um, that aren't normally used for a, um, domain name or a path, um, when you're uploading your content? Yes. That's a very good, that's okay. a very good name. A very good um, question. So, um, Right now, uh, we do recommend that everything needs to be in, um, well, no spaces. Um, special characters should be okay. Um, but what we are basically trying to improve on is automatically being able to take that problem away from you. So if you have any spaces or um, um, and special characters that the web wouldn't accept, we'll firstly warn you. Um, but then we can also automatically configure that and translate that to something that would work for all of your pages. So that's something that we have very, very soon coming up on the roadmap because there are a lot of people that have similar similar issues with that um, because of the way the content is produced. But um, that's a good question. And and yes, we ideally you, we, you need to be in a web specific format for the file names um, or the URLs. Excellent. Let me um, just take a moment and say thank you, Elston. 
And uh, I think we're we're like into the Q and A. So let me uh, just say let's let's take like a, a clean break and say we are done presenting now. Unless you yeah. have questions that lead us back to showing something on screen. And um, so uh, in Zoom, uh, you should be able to see a raise hand option down at the bottom. And uh, if you do that, we can um, we can uh, call on you and on my and have you unmute. And then you can uh, you can actually ask the question. And if we have as we have dead air as we're waiting for um, uh, people's hands to get raised and get them unmuted, um, Myra and April will still be going through the the questions that you put into the chat and the Q and A and making sure those get answered. Um, so I already see uh, Carolyn's hand is up, so I want to give her a chance. And I just want to say thank you to everybody uh, for joining and um, yeah, looking forward to hearing your questions. So Carolyn's hand just went down. Uh, Carolyn, if you still have the question, go ahead and hit raise hand again. Perfect. There I see you. And um, oh, I need to take back the presenter role. So let me just go ahead and do that. It'll just take me a moment as I figure out where that option is. Let's see. Can I ask another question while you're doing that? Yeah, um, go for it. And I'll we'll get that um, switched over. This is for Elston. Aldo wants to know about dealing with large projects. Um, mm -hmm. I noticed your Pro Plus says you can upload up to 150 megabytes. Yeah. Um, is there any comment you have about other large projects or anything larger than that? Yeah, um, that's a very good question again. So um, we've we are open to increasing that um, limit based on you know custom plans, uh, but additionally we are going, going to re um, release a kind of media plan, um, and that media plan will be for much larger file formats, some some something where you'd have content with you has a lot of videos and pictures. So we are planning on releasing again on our roadmap very soon the ability to upload uh, maybe half a gigabyte to a gigabyte. Um, the it's obviously not going to be as quick to upload half a gigabyte um, of, of data. So we we're working on making that as smooth as possible. Um, but that is something that uh, we, we, we realize that um, people want to you know, upload and, and it's something that we, we are going to support very soon. That's awesome. Thank you so much for addressing that. Aldo, I hope that answered your question. <laughs> Yeah, and I would mention too, like in this example, we place the video in InDesign, but you also have the option of embedding like a YouTube video, for example, yeah. which wouldn't add to your file size. Um, so that can make things easier. Um, Carolyn, I'm, I've got the host back and I'm coming back around to you. You should be able to unmute now. Cool, hi. Um, so we are in interactive PDF hell. And um, I represent a design studio and, you know, we, we have a couple of big problems. Now, first of all, you know, I've been lurking in, in five for a while. I haven't tried it yet, but Justin, you've been very patient with me because I've been like, you know, harassing you for years about it. Uh, but now I feel like we've kind of come to the point where um, people are frustrated and need to come up with a solution. So when I've sort of thrown this idea out, aside from the learning curve, which I will take on and teach them, uh, I think the biggest issues we have is, you know, we work for huge, uh, our clients are huge corporations and security is just outrageous. Um, we, you know, the idea of even putting on our own website, like a, you know, whatever secure domain we could get is just outrageous. Like we, we are restricted to, we can't use Dropbox. We can't use, you know, we have to, we're right now, we're sort of restricted to only using OneDrive because that's the most secure because the two factor, blah, 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 which is why we use the PDF. Um, of course, anybody who has a PDF can share it. So that's not the issue. It's, I think we're just worried about, you know, being hacked or someone getting uh, into the proprietary information. So that's everybody's freaking out about right now when I bring this up. Um, so that's number one. Number two, um, so we, we have a monotype font subscription and we also obviously have Adobe. Um, and uh, I'm curious about like none of our, none of the fonts that we you are using through monotype have a web version. In fact, they're pretty much all desktop fonts. So when you're starting to then publish, is that doesn't that mean you need a web font license? 
Those are good questions. And it sounds like there's a couple of questions in there. So um, yeah, please, couple, yeah, no, <laughs> please stay on and just make sure that, that uh, we get them all answered. So I'll, right. the last one first, um, the, you, if you're going to have live text, like the two examples, the, the Allegheny College Alumni Magazine and the scrolling website have live text. In those cases, you do want a font that is licensed for the web. Um, and the other cases where it's being rendered as an image, uh, you're safe. Uh, because it's not actually including the font. So it really depends on if you if you really need live text. Um, and it sounds like the fact that the websites aren't public, you don't need SEO. Uh, you don't need it to be exposed to search engines. So um, that might be an option. Uh, so and, and that's the default because I think a lot of people just want to see their InDesign layout and the output. And the simplest way to do that is to render uh, the text as images. Right, to render it. And, and does it come out sharp though? Yes, uh, you, you can do, you can, it's high resolution by default. Um, you also have the option of um, rendering it as SVG, which means uh, scalable vector graphics. Sure. Um, so they would be crisp at, at any resolution, any size. I see. Because that's really important because we are, we're actually packaging design. So, you know, it has to be as sharp as possible. Yep. Um, okay. So I'm still a little fuzzy about the, about the uh, font licensing because I feel like even if you embed it, you still kind of have to have the license. Um, I, I don't, not as an image, right? You are completely safe as it comes out, if it comes out as an image. Um, okay. But if it's live text, like we have an option to embed the fonts in the output, have live text and take the, the fonts from your computer and put them in the output. In that case, they definitely have to be web fonts. I don't um, think we have to worry about um, live text anyway, because okay. we don't want, I mean, our, we, we just make presentations. I don't think we're meant, it's not about being able to edit or, yeah. and I guess even if we did, we could use Adobe fonts for that, right? Correct, yes. Yeah. So, I, so I think there are a couple of good ways around it. And the simplest one is rendering them as images or SVG, and you would not be subject to any font licenses with that. Um, okay. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to produce anything with the fonts anyway, because that's the same as printing it or making, you know, a static graphic, a JPEG or a GIF or something. And yeah. they can't they can't restrict you to that. Otherwise, the fonts would be useless to you. True. OK, cool. Um, now, what about so you're I, I, I guess do you have um, where can I get more information to send to the powers that be about the security issues? The online security issues? So in other words, if, yeah, so if wherever it lives, whatever these mm -hmm. things live, uh, where, I mean, how, how can we, I mean, we're, we're already struggling with trying to keep our own servers secure, you know, yeah. uh, from whatever. So uh, w what information could I present, whether it's with tiny hosts, which of course we'd have to put our own domain in there. Um, you know, where, where would, because I don't do that. Somebody else does that. Uh, so I would have to pass on that information, whether it's with Tidy Host or, or any other hosting. Cause I think the thing about these, my, my suggestion would be to share these, these uh, HTML files with the client with a link, right? And then at the end, give them a, a PDF that they can download that is static of the, the same presentation without any bells and whistles, but just the, because they really, in the end, they want to see the packaging, but it's always fun to, you know, make the packaging come, come up to a life. I, I love yeah. particularly the 3D thing where you can move it. That's really, really neat. Um, um, oh, sorry. Uh, no, I'm I was just saying say it's amazing. So I'm just saying like, I, but I have to be able to provide, uh, the information where you can just share me maybe some information from your site where yeah. I can show them that this is a way to make it secure. Yeah. I, I hear you on that. And it's definitely a, um, that's definitely a common like corporate requirement. So I, I just want to, I think this is mostly a, a question uh, oh, for cool. Look at that. Elson to answer. That. Yeah. There's download PDF version. Nice. Um, me, it can wait, produce can that automatically. Screen grab of that? Hang on. Yeah, go ahead and take a screen grab. Nice. Okay. Wait, you're, can you do that again? Because, the, yeah, there we go. Yep. The uh, tool go tip went off. There we go. Cool. All right. I love yep. that. Yep. And that, and that, that's just an option as you're exporting. 
So okay. it'll generate the PDF for you, or you can generate a custom PDF. Um, and then how so does it render the, the um, interactivity? It just makes it static? It's just static in the PDF, yeah. And can you control the key frame of what shows? Like say there's a video in there? Um, it, the poster image, I think, for the video would show. Okay. So where I set that poster image um, mm -hmm. of the, the guy doing the yeah. pose around the sun. Sure. Yeah, that's what would show in the PDF. You also have the option of creating a separate print PDF and attaching that if you want ah. to not have interactive stuff. End up doing that. But anyway, that, yeah, that's really cool. So I wanted to mention that, but I think the security, the security would be um, a question for Elson. I would say you probably have the option in your company to hand these files off to people. And I think the flip side, then they could say, well, we have, we know the security measures, but the flip side is then you don't really have control. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of red tape. And so I think um, if you had the option to do something like tiny host, you can control it. Um, and so I'll leave, I'll leave it to Elston to talk about their security measures. Yeah. Um, I mean, from a security perspective, I, if, if you need like um, a detailed kind of overview of how things are set up for whoever's referenced, then feel yeah. free just to message us and we'll be happy to, you know, send something over. Um, but uh, we're, we're hosted on kind of Amazon Web Services, which are, uh, you know, very secure and, and a lot of the internet host is hosted on that. Um, but plus the way our architecture is built, um, it's, it's designed, especially with a password protection mechanism to, to ensure that nobody can just, you know, circumvent that um, and get around with it. So um, it's without getting too technical in it. I mean, there are the kind of types of um, password protection mechanisms that will just protect it from kind of your browser. And there are ways to go around that but we protect it right from the server side. So it means that um, it's a very kind of, you know, tight uh, integration with the security mechanism that we have. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I mean, but, but we can provide more information as, as such need be, but I, I, I understand your issue. Um, I mean, there, there are a lot of com companies that, that already host their content on um, Amazon Web Services. So um, it's a familiar, familiar name in a lot of corporate environments as well. Well, um, also we add our own layer on top of that as well. So um, hopefully, yeah, that, that can fly sometimes. We, our our, our uh, cloud server is Amazon, so. Okay, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, cool. it's not far off. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, cool, Excellent. that's great. I've been saving all of these links, so thank you very much for sharing those. Wonderful. You're welcome. Thanks, Carolyn. Hopefully we, we got most of your questions answered, are all your questions? I think so. Is, do moment. you have a single, I, I didn't check on, on um, in five, do you, could I like buy a single, cause I can't use the trial cause I have to have all the features. Mm -hmm. Do you have like a single user that I can just try out before I buy it for the whole company? Usually the best thing to do is to get a one month plan and just get the, the plan that fits the features you want. Nice. Um, so usually that's the goal plan, but if you want to try the, just the really basic stuff, well, you'd want the viewer display with the PDF. So at least yeah, the pro, yeah, yeah. pro. Um, but okay. yeah, you can just get it for a month and then you can switch anytime and it'll be pro rated and you can upgrade oh, plans. If you want more users, Perfect. it's very flexible. Okay. Sounds great. All right. Thank you. Um, well, I'm going to, I, uh, Aldo, I'm going to, let you talk. I don't know if we answered your question earlier, but you could. You should be ready to unmute. Hey, Can you hear me? Yep. yep. Hello. Hello, Elston. It's Aldo in the UK. Hey. Um, in five has just been brilliant for me. Um, it's increased my turnover dramatically. Um, one of the big problems for me has been as a one-man band, and I don't think it would matter if you were a big agency anyway. Uh, companies don't like to see your name on the link. That's why I I raised it earlier. I did a job for Mercedes-Benz recently. And of course, they loved the interactivity. They loved the, the, the way it was working. And in the end, they went for um, um, uh, an animated GIF, you know, not the full project, because they couldn't be bothered to load the HTML files that I was giving or trying, trying to give them to put onto their own server, you know, and I'm starting to find that with large corporates. I do, I do a lot of work with big power companies in the UK and they're the same, you know, it's like uh, wading through treacle trying to get their 
IT department to see it. So I just wanted to be 100% sure that if I go with your company, I can create, um, and here's one, I'm just going to paste it into the, uh, the questions thing. There you go. Mm -hmm. There is a standard link that I give to my client for a project that I'm working on at the moment, yeah? Mm -hmm. So it starts with my company um, URL. Yeah. Which they don't want. <laughs> you know, great for me. It promotes me. But you know, if you're EDF, which is one of the biggest power companies in the world, you don't want yeah. my name in front of it. So just to be clear, I can I can hide me through through tiny URL then, yeah. Yeah. So it's it I guess the question is, do you need to host it, for example, on EDF's domain? So EDF. No, uh, no. I I want to I want to circumnavigate that because okay. I can't keep dealing with their IT department. They just walk backwards all the time. I just yeah. want to host it for the client. Here you go. It's secure, and here's the name, and it looks like EDF. It just doesn't carry my name, really. That's it. Yeah. So the, my specific question is: Does it need to say EDF in the in the it URL? Doesn't, it, it, ideally, it should because that's the company that's paying for it. But yeah. uh, what, why do you ask that then, Elston? Because oh, I'm just wondering to what level you want to, uh, I guess, uh, brand it. Because so that is um, again difficult to do in a sense that we would re you would require the IT department to set up um, a couple of um, configurations to enable tiny host to communicate. I mean, that's just generally internet. Otherwise, you'd be able to upload anything to anyone's URL, right? So you wouldn't be able to do that um, unless you get their consent to do that. However, um, yes, if you, if you have another domain name, um, mm. like a, a, a more vanilla one that doesn't have your company mm. name, or you're welcome to use, you know, our domain, which is tiny.site. We'll also be introducing new domains. Um, then that's that's yeah, that's very straightforward to set up. But if um, I, okay, if I took out EDF and just said West Burton A History Ebook, mm -hmm. is that it? Does that work with you then? Because the client would be ah, sorry, it. yeah, no. So the, the word EDF in your URL is fine. What I'm talking about is if you want to host it on www.edf. No, no, I don't want to go there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. So no, so what you have is completely fine. Yeah. Um, oh, great. Okay. Be. I mean, in, in, in your scenario, um, what I would recommend is, yeah, because you've, you've, you've hosted it on a sub path. So you've got forward slash EDF West Burton mm. history ebook, which is a bit, a bit long to, um, you know, maybe remember. So, um, mm. You can easily host it on a subdomain. So you can host it on maybe, um, yeah, West Burton, uh, yeah. West Burton book dot subdomain dot com, yeah. um, which keeps it very you know straightforward and simple yeah. and easy to share. So yeah. subdomains are a lot easier to share as well, and that's that's very straightforward to set up, like I showed you in the, in the demo. Yeah. Great. One final question. Yeah. Um, are you based in the UK? Yes, I am uh, based in London. Yeah. Right. Oh, well, London. So you've got 5G. In the provinces, we don't. So uh, one of the big problems I have is streaming. This project is the equivalent of, I don't know, a two, three thousand page book to okay. give you a feel. It is a nonlinear project because of the scale. So I've got videos and audio files and all kinds of stuff going on. It's massive. Um, so I'm thinking of going down the Cloudflare route to, mm -hmm. to smooth down the uh, the downloads to people who might be on 4G because loads of people in the UK are. How do you deal with that? What? Yes, very good question. So Cloudflare you would, you use for um, as a CDN basically, um, and we actually if you connect a custom domain to us, we automatically provide you with a CDN similar to Cloudflare. Uh -huh. Um, so this is called CloudFront, which is by Amazon Web Services. So any um, site hosted on us automatically is configured with the CDN and SSL. So we take care of all of that for you. So you don't have to think about it. Um, and yes, so uh, CloudFront's availability is international, it's run by Amazon. So you'd get very high caching um, and downloads across the world um, as well. So that's all completely taken care of for you. Perfect. I'm a customer tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, nice. yeah. Great. yeah i mean yeah feel free to shoot me an email or message me i'm okay. very happy to talk more yeah. okay thank you so, thanks aldo appreciate it um 
Sharon, uh, you had your hand raised, but brought it down. If you still have your question, feel free to raise your hand. I'm going to, I want to take a brief like educational break here, just in case um, some people were lost in different pieces. Um, I want to describe a CDN for you. And, and we were kind of talking about a subdomain without being explicit about it. And I just want to be explicit about it. Um, so first the subdomain, let me share my screen and just show um, the URL I had on here before at the bottom, academy.ajar.pro. So ajar.pro is just a mirror to ajarproductions.com and ajar.pro is the domain, right? So it could be www.ajar.pro. And I think what is not fully common knowledge, excuse me, fully common knowledge is that the www is a subdomain. So in this case, ajar.pro is the domain um, and academy is the subdomain. So that links you to Ajar Academy. We have that hosted on a subdomain. So what Tinyhost is doing by default um, is they're taking their site and allowing you to put a subdomain on it, or you can take a custom site and add a subdomain. So um, because most people looking at the internet aren't savvy about this, um, it's used it's used for phishing sometimes, um, but, but it's also kind of helpful in, in more of a white hat way in that if, like Aldo was asking, you have a company that wants something slightly branded toward them, they don't need it to be their actual site, or they just really don't want it to be branded as something else, um, Elson su suggested a, a, a vanilla URL. So you start with your domain, let's say your domain is like um, content.com or something really generic, right? And then you can add a subdomain that is like that company name uh, so company.content.com. And then it, it kind of looks like it belongs to the company. And that might even be a, a, a useful sales pitch uh, to clients. So that's just a, a distinction that's aware of. You don't have to own the company URL. You can own the subdomain or you could use the tiny.site uh, subdomain that comes built in. Mm -hmm. So that hopefully that helps describe the subdomains and how you can take advantage of those um, to, to kind of semi-brand stuff for clients. Um, the other thing I want to just like spend an extra moment on is the CDN because this is another thing the tiny house the tiny host pro account uh, is doing for you, which Aldo, Aldo understands that, so that's what he said. Like sold, I'm doing it tomorrow because uh, what uh, what a CDN, which is a content distribution network, does is take your files and host them in multiple places around the the globe. And then based on where uh, somebody is located when they're requesting the files into their browser, it serves them the, the closest from the closest server. So they get the fastest service no matter where they are. So it really helps uh, in rural places like Aldo was saying. Um, and, and so it's, it's sort of tailored to um, what, where the, the person is. Um, and, you, you're using this all the time on sites without realizing it, like fast loading big sites, you know, YouTube, for example, is being served up on a CDN. So stuff is loading really quickly. And normally that's complicated to set up and you have to worry about how your URLs are pointing to each other because some of them live on the CDN and some of them live on your site and that. And what Tinyhost does is you just upload your zip file and it serves them on a CDN. So that is um, an incredibly complicated thing that's doing for you automatically. Um, and it's making everything faster for the people on the other end. And this is another thing with a traditional host that is complicated and expensive because what you need to do generally to get your content served faster is to pay more money, right? You need a faster server, you need to do all this. So having that just being built in by default is a big deal. And so that's what a CDN is. It, it distributes your content and helps it load faster. Um, so Sharon, thank you for, uh, raising your hand again. I'm going to let you unmute and, uh, you can do that go ahead and ask your question. Yes. Hi. I hey. actually wanted to ask that, um, if I have a domain name from another, like hosting her, I can set it up using tiny host, right? Yes, definitely. I mean, as long as you own the domain name, um, you can definitely set it up. We, if you're familiar with, with setting up domain names, you basically add, we need to add two C name records. The process takes, you know, max 15 minutes to half an hour based on who you've registered with. Um, so you can leave your current setup the same and just add two, two new C name records. And then it's, it's configured for tiny host. So that's as easy as that. Okay. And I also wanted to ask that I am hosting a website in Hostinger, 
but i want a subdomain that can be hosted in tiny host so can i do that so, sorry could you you have a website already hosted so yes in hostinger but i want the subdomain of that website on, on to be yes exactly so that's yes. the other thing i mentioned is that suppose um you have your website already set up so you know agileproductions.com um and it's running website it's been running for years and you have visitors on it but you want to now share content on subdomain so maybe demo.agileproductions.com or um trial.agileproductions.com you can um configure that uh, easily as well so you don't have to change um your existing configuration at all you just add two new um c name records again and then you can automatically start uploading content to any subdomain dot your custom domain dot com via um tiny host control panel okay you got it thank you yeah you're welcome thank you for the question thanks for raising your hand again tron um if anybody else has questions, like I said, we're so we're we're past the hour, but we are happy to stay and answer questions. Uh, but in order to do that, you have to ask them. So make sure to press the button to raise your hand. Um, in the meantime, Myra or April, do we have anything lingering from the chat or the Q and A that we should try and answer? I think we're good, unless I missed something. If I've if I've missed your question, go ahead and post it again. Uh, Maurice said something about. Um... E-commerce, Elston, do you have any comments about that? Um, How it does tiny host work with e-commerce or, yes, so or that, bells and whistles? That's a good question. So um, tiny host is what we call a static web hosting provider, um, which means um, we work just with things like HTML, images, JavaScript, and videos. E-commerce platforms typically require, um, you know, server side, um, so actual servers to be packaged as well as, you know, HTML. So a typical e-commerce platform, such as like a WordPress or like something right, like Shopify is, is not fully supported. However, we have, you know, um, clients who would create landing pages um, for products. So it's great for just a product page that it describes like your, the, the product, the descriptions and pictures. Um, and then you could link it to a payment link. Um, so that is a good idea. Yeah. So <laughs> you have, you could create a product page for all different cases. There's, there's a number of different marketing kind of use cases we found as well. So um, it's, it's great for also maybe different localizations. You might, you might have your main, you know, e-commerce platform, um, but maybe you want to create a spe specific product page for a specific niche or like a, uh, maybe a region of the world. So you, in that case, you wouldn't have to edit your main site. You can just, um, spin it up on tiny host and you can even host it on your own domain and share that and, and, and test it out and see how it's performing. Um, and link back to your original site event when, when they need to pay for it or something like that. So in that way, it, it's where I think um, it works well. Yeah, Maurice already said thank you. That makes a lot of sense. You're welcome. Wonderful. Uh, so last call, everybody, if you want to know something about InDesign interactivity, exporting within five, hosting with tiny host, hosting in general, you've got us here right now. So raise your hand. And, uh, and we will do our best to answer your question. There is Maurice, thank you. And anybody else, if you wanna get in the queue, raise your hand, because uh, we will start winding down if we don't uh, see more questions. So Maurice, you should be okay to unmute. Great, thank you hey, so Maurice. much. I'm a huge fan of, uh, of M5, as everybody knows. Um, and my question is about, I guess it's not so much about hosting, but I mean, you did say any questions. So. <laughs> Um, yeah. My question is about accessibility, and um, it's become a big deal at my company, which is a big uh, financial firm, and uh, there, there are certain websites and tools that they, that they use to, that it's like, you know, if you don't pass that website, then, then you know, you're, you're just out of luck, you know, you, and there's a few of them, and uh, I just I don't I haven't tried yet to see if any of the stuff that N5 outputs you know can pass the muster, but 
do you, I mean, have you tried that yet? Do you know of sites where, you know, that I could upload to that where I could show that this, this output is accessible and is, uh, you know, I can vet it for a certain sites or, you know, there's, there seems, it's just a really complicated, complex thing. And there's so many, so much involved with it. And there's so many people who seem to think that they, you know, they know it all. And, and, uh, so I'm just, and I, but I still love, I mean, I love the simplicity of, of working in InDesign and exporting that way. The tiny host thing is great. Um, I don't want to get tripped up by somebody who says, well, you didn't, you know, you didn't pass this, this test here. Yeah, the reality is you've described the situation quite well, um, that it's hard not to get tripped up by somebody because um, there are different testing tools um, and they test things differently. The the standards are a little bit varied and um, the people or the, the stuff that you can create is so varied as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a balancing act. And I think the thing when we talk about accessibility is we talk about it as if it's a binary, is it accessible or not accessible? Um, and that just, that doesn't really apply. It's really a spectrum and it, and there's different kinds of accessibility, right? There's, um, there's visual impaired accessibility. There's color blindness, uh, specifically there's, um, there's auditory impairment accessibility. Um, there's navigational accessibility. Like can somebody, are they operating with the same type of, uh, tool as everybody else? So something like a page peel might be kind of hard to navigate. Um, so within five, there are diff different options that you can choose um, that change the accessibility dramatically. Um, so it, as I just mentioned, the page peel is not one of the more accessible options. Um, and so that's something to think about. So when you, when sort of answering the question is in five ac output accessible or not? Well, the input, ex the, the out output varies considerably in terms of its accessibility. And it depends on what you've created um, what the content is like, what options you, you chose when you exported. Um, so that's a topic we're going to, there's an article in the chat. Um, and there, there are definitely these tools and we cannot accommodate all of the tools, right? Cause they're going to come out with something new. Some company is going to say, this is my tool. We don't use the, the three ones you've been testing with. Um, so that that's, that's a, a hurdle we can probably never meet, especially because N5's first mandate is to replicate the, the layout and the interactivity of InDesign, right? Just like you were saying, the goal is to make that easy. Um, and that, that comes with a trade-off of accessibility, right? Because it's manually positioning pieces on the screen as opposed to laying it out in a flow for the purpose of accessibility. Um, so it, accessibility to some extent is always gonna take a backseat within five to those things. But that being said, um, we do have a goal of continuing to approve that over time. And something we're gonna do probably in the next few months um, is host a, a discussion like this on Zoom um, where we're gonna get your feedback. Um, we're gonna talk about accessibility. We're gonna see what kinds of things we can do. Um, and we're gonna try and figure out some actionable steps. Um, so one really good example of an actionable item um, that somebody presented on a, a Q and A we had was um, multi-state objects um, that they wanted the screen reader that goes through and reads the screen for someone um, who can't necessarily see it is to not read um, sta object states that aren't currently being displayed. Um, so that's something we can do and then kind of trigger an event when the state changes and make that state accessible to the screen reader. So that's a very like concrete thing that we can do. Um, saying like, is it accessible? And, and this is often what we get because like you say, we, there are IT departments and people who are like, it didn't pass this test. Well, there's a lot of things that show up in the test that are quite, uh, quite frankly, just irrelevant, right? Like it, 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 it's an automated thing and it pulls out stuff that it's like, it'll tell you something like, uh, this item isn't allowed to have alt text. Would alt text is something you put on for a screen reader. And it's like, okay, so what? Does that hurt anything? You know, it's gonna do, it's gonna give you noise like that too. 
Um, but there are, but there are specific things we can address. And so we're going to try and do that. And that's going to be, um, a back and forth discussion with you guys. Um, so if you just, um, keep an eye on the newsletters, um, that is on the, the semi near term horizon. I don't know if it's going to be this year cause we're getting very close to the end of the year, but, um, but in probably the next six months, we're hoping to do something like that. And, um, so it's something we're thinking about, but it, it's never going to be the number one purpose of the tool. But we'll, we will try and, and, and make that better and provide more resources for that. Um, and then in between there is, you know, playing around with the output, um, doing things like uh, doing a little bit of extra setup to export live text, um, choosing output options, like not using a flip book, maybe using more of a, a website kind of look. Um, so that the, the text is there and flat, um, maybe even doing uh, one where it's a multi-page output, right? So only the content of that page is there and then it flips to the next page. It sort of simplifies the HTML that has to be read at any given time. So the things like that you can do and some of those are covered in that article. So that's a, a lengthy question, um, but I wanna answer it thoroughly because we do get that a lot. And um, I just want you to know we're thinking about it and we are we're gonna actively seek more input from you on that. So stay tuned. All right, great, thank you, Justin. Thanks, appreciate the question. All right, I'm not seeing any more hands. So I think we will wrap it up. Um, we'll send out a link to the recording when we have it. Um, we'll try and include some resources. We're definitely gonna include um, the promos that Elston set up uh, so you can get the extra space for the trial and uh, the 20% off. And um, if you have any questions, you can email any of us. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining. Uh, thanks, Elston, for being with us. Thanks, Myra and April for answering questions and staying on top of everything. And uh, everybody, please stay safe and uh, have a nice rest of your week. Thanks for having me. Thanks.